Oh yeah, Moss Movies and Shows. What is going on, everybody? What's up, Nirvana West Carson TV? Hey, check this out, man. Um, one of you know, a really, really good friend of mine, man. Um, I've been knowing him for man, getting close to a few years now, man. I remember when I first met this gentleman, and one of the cool things about it is I actually watched this gentleman's movies uh before i met him but one thing i didn't know is how many movies he had out there you guys might be surprised because i was surprised to see, when i looked it up i was like oh wait a second david rocha man uh he's had his his hand in the movie uh game for a minute now so let's go ahead let's bring him on let's grill him let's put his feet to the fire and let's ask him everything we can man about his time in the movie business, my good friend, one Mr. Pastor David Rocha. Hey, how you doing? Good, good, good. Pastor, how about yourself? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Good, good to see you. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah, it's been a minute or two. Uh, how's everything going with uh, House of Rest? Good, man. Always busy. As you know, you probably know we were in Houston for a week. Yes. So we just uh, got back from there, and uh, it's been good. Just always busy, but that's a good thing, you know? Okay, when did you guys uh, get back in from Houston? We got in on Friday. So we left last Sunday and then got back Friday. And then we touched down running because then we had a grocery giveaway. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. So, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, it was wild. Yeah. Uh, Wes Carson, everything's low right now. It's uh, it's kind of a bad time, man. Everything's low at the moment, man. Unfortunately. But everything is very low, man. Um, Pastor, I why I, I don't know how I came across one of your movies uh years ago. Yeah, um, I think the first one I came across was Blood and Tears, I believe it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the first one. Now I was like Wait, I think I know this guy. This is the rapper guy that's from up north and stuff. But, you know, um, I think you were more known for your music than than uh, you being in movies. Um, but a lot of that music didn't really sell here in the area that I'm in, in, in Southern California. But uh, I was just told that, oh, yeah, you know, that's a that's a rapper, man. He's, he's from up north and all. And then I remember watching another movie. And I'm like, okay, I like the stories it's it's kind of low budget but the yeah. stories were actually good and pretty meaningful um and then i started looking into your you know your career in movies is this true you started in 1998 and ended at, at least as an actor in 2003 but yeah you were still involved in a movie back in 2014 yeah well i did do a christian film when i got out Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and that that's uh, always with you. Yeah, yeah. I had I had my um one of my daughters actually star in it, uh, with along with a, a few other actors that I knew. Nice, nice, nice. So, Pastor, let's let's start from the from the beginning. Um, obviously, you were a rapper first, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started rapping when I was in high school. Still, how did how did you? go into getting into the movie business, which I believe your first movie is Penitentiary Chances. Um, well, it was kind of by accident, to be honest with you, because, well, not accident. See, the, the label that we had, uh, wait, hold on. Who has it too loud? I'm hearing my echo. I'm hearing my voice, man. Okay, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. All good, Pastor. All good. All, All good. right. So, anyways, um, the it was me and two brothers that started Darkroom Studios, okay, in a label. And and what happened was, we were trying to every every artist is trying to figure out how to come up, how to how to uh, be known more known than the next artist and whatnot. And we're just like, man, what can we do? What can we do like to really you know, get the attention of people. What's, where's my voice coming from? It's, I'm still hearing the echo over here. Sorry, man. It's all good. It's all good. I, I hear you good here. Yeah. So, um, 
we were uh so we were just like the two brothers it was two brothers and myself and he was like man why don't we do a movie and i'm like a movie we don't know nothing about making movies you know and he was just like yeah let's just make a movie you know and um Wait. I think it was, was that my speakers? Oh, that was weird. Okay, so then he's like, why don't we, we do a movie? And I'm like, we don't know anything about it. He was, man, we'll just we'll figure it out. So they went to a rental place, rented a 16 millimeter camera. The guy gave him a rundown on how to change the film. He gave him the basics on how to focus and whatnot. And um, next thing you know, we're shooting a movie. And it was funny because he's like, well, you're going to be the actor on it. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, uh, you barely got my attention when you said make a movie and now you want me to act in it, you know? And, uh, so he's like, yeah, he goes, uh, yeah, man, you, you, you act in it, man. You would just, we'll just, we'll just do this. I said, we don't know what we're doing. And that's when we did penitentiary chances like a 15, 20 minute short film. And, uh, but here's the thing, right? Is it did exactly what we wanted because you, you know, especially see now with YouTube and everything, anybody can be in the camera, but back then, if you have a movie, it pushes your music that much further. You know, it kind of, kind of, in a sense, makes you bigger than life. Uh -huh. And, yeah. and that's kind of what happened. I mean, I'm embarrassed about the movie, embarrassed about my acting, but nevertheless, um, it did exactly what it was meant to do, which was, um, it pushed the soundtrack and, and, and our music even further than it could have without it. And um, after that, we kind of caught the movie bug. Which I do want to get into that. But, okay, so, like you said, back then, this is 1998. There is no YouTube. There's, you know, the internet isn't advanced where it's at today. So you guys made a short film and did what with it? What It's like, okay, we got it. We were done filming. Okay. But what did you well, do with back, it? Well, you got to understand that back then when we, we had nationwide distribution for our music. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we hit up distribution and say, Hey, we're going to do a film. We're going to do this movie. And, um, what do, what do we, and they're just like, well, we're music distributors. We, we have nothing to do with movies. So then we thought the idea of what, and then we said this in the meeting, we're like, well, it, ha it has a movie soundtrack with it. Mm. And they're like, Oh, <laughs> you know, so basically we got the movie through distribution, through a music distributor into Sam Goody's, Tower Records, Musicland, all of them, because it came accompanied with the soundtrack and um, and it went nationwide. So that's how we were able to get it. And then our second film, which was our full, or our first full length film, uh, we got it into Blockbuster Video and Hollywood Video. Was that Veteranos? Veteranos, yeah. That was with uh, with uh, uh, Jesse Borrego from Blood In, Blood Out. Yeah, how, how'd you go? Yeah, I come right here. How'd you go get uh, how'd you guys get uh, Crucito if that was pretty much just your first uh, full yeah. movie? You know, he 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 we just talked to him. I, I guess he saw he he saw the humbleness. I guess I don't know. We we, we didn't know what we were doing, and we just told him we're a big fan of uh, at that time, Blood In, Blood Out. Mm. It wasn't too too much after that he did that movie. And, um, and he's like, listen, guys, he goes, pay my hotel, pay me whatever. He goes, uh, an X amount of money. He gave us an amount, but it, it was a very humble, what he was asking for. And, and, um, all of his scenes were done in three days. And what we did was spread those scenes out in the movie. So it looks like he's throughout the whole movie. Okay. And did you guys run into him? How did you guys reach out to him? How, how did um, that come about? I, I believe the two brothers got a hold of, of, they were very resourceful, these guys, Okay, you know, and uh, somehow they got his number and got his direct number and uh, and just talked to him, you know, and, and he flew in. We flew him into San Francisco and super cool, man, super cool guy. And uh, and uh, he did Veteranos with us. And uh, that was our first that That's what helped us get into Blockbuster Video and Hollywood Video, because his his face and his name was on the cover. You know, without throwing anybody under the bus, was there anybody else that you reached out to that said Charles? Uh, not that I, no, actually. Really? Yeah, we didn't. I mean, we weren't. We knew. I mean, if we weren't going to go ask Tom Cruise or nothing. You know, we right, right. we, we kind of knew our limits. But as far as Rasa, um, 
every single person that we tried and and if they did turn it down it's because they were busy like for instance we asked jimmy smith's one time okay. um but that's when he made um uh price of glory the boxing movie yeah yeah underrated yeah. movie by the way very oh, yeah. underrated movie that that movie does not get its praise but yeah uh, price of glory is a very underrated movie good movie yeah bro. so um um but you know that made sense um the guy that play, played the played the father in American Me, he was also in Price of Glory. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes. I I, I don't remember his name, but yes, yes. Yeah. So a lot of those guys turned us down, but because they were in the middle of filming that movie, mm. um, we asked um, Sadie Lopez, who was also in in um, uh, Mi Vida Loca. Mm. You know Sadie Lopez, the the other girl from Sad Girl. Yeah, uh, the, the two best uh, friends. Uh, yeah. Um. Ah, uh, shoot. Now her name escaped me. Um. <laughs> yeah, she was just recently the mother in uh, the Selena show. Um. Yeah. 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 She, Dang, how come I can't think of her name? Is this? Yeah. This at the, at that time, it? at that time, she had um backed away from acting. Um. Mm -hmm. So then, when we did uh Blood and Tears, we wanted to get Sadie Lopez. Okay. And um, but she said that she had backed away from acting and I forgot what she was doing. So then we um talked to Angel Avilas, who was her rival in in yeah. uh and she agreed. You know, she That's agreed, nice. she she liked it and she came through and um she liked the story and we flew her in and, and uh had her in uh, Blood and Tears. Yeah, and that I think that was the first movie I think I watched. Uh, uh, yeah. of yours was uh, Blood and Tears. I I, I like the story you're getting out of the joint. I think yeah. you're doing nine years or something like that, and uh, you wanted to turn your life around, but it's it's kind of like um, kind of that saying in uh, uh, Godfather Three. Every time I try to get out, they pull me back <laughs> in. You know, yeah. and uh, yeah. it, it was uh, it was kind of a sad ending. You know, it, it was, actually it was a very sad ending. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't yeah. watched it, but um, no, it, it was a very sad ending, man. It's like man, I think it. it's on YouTube. They can watch it on YouTube, and I think I maybe even Prime, Amazon Prime. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's also on. Uh, I believe Tubi. Okay. I think it's it's free on uh, on Tubi. Um, what's with uh, was it Pumpkin Patch? pictures um, yeah those, those are the two brothers oh is that them yeah they're the kiddos brothers they're still they're still uh i believe doing movies and, and whatnot really under that under pumpkin patch mm -hmm. uh, uh pictures yeah yeah i believe so i'm not sure i know they did one because um when i got out of prison they were in the middle of filming uh a horror movie and i remember being on set like i was fresh out of prison and i'm in a movie set like a couple days later and um, I, I kind of hung out with them for a couple of days, and uh, so, but I don't talk to them much now. But I think they're they're still out there doing stuff. Yeah, uh, Pastor. I mean, the the it keeps going on. Uh, you, you've been in quite a few movies. Some of them I have no idea that you've uh, been in. Uh, Downtime in two thousand one. Smile yeah. now, cry later. Which I love that story. That is a great great story yeah. right there. Uh, oh, with the, the little brother that raps. The the young brother who actually you end up getting killed because of yeah. uh, you know yeah. his doing. You're the big brother. Uh, Downtime 2001, Smile Now Cry Later 2001, The Dope Game 2002, Drug Lords 2003, Dope Game Part 2 2003, Jack Moves 2003. Pastor. <laughs> uh, you got incarcerated, I believe it was in 2004, correct? Yeah, 2004. Had you not got incarcerated, Pastor, do you believe you would have kept on making movies? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. I, I think that that's where I, it probably would have led to because um, that's when people started, uh, uh, remember uh, LimeWire and all those that started stealing music, basically? And, oh, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was getting... Yeah, basically all those free downloads killed the music industry. As far as independent music, it killed it. It killed it. So you either had to go into movies or 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 like clothesline or something. You had to do something. Um, and I, I think that I probably would have switched over to film and gotten more serious with acting and then probably would have went that direction. At least even in the background of directing or, you know, producing. 
Okay. Okay. Um, having people like, uh, like Lucito and sad girl, um, did you guys ever keep in touch with them and try to, you know, rub elbows with them a little bit more and, um, try to get their influence to make more movies? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure the brothers did the keto brothers, pumpkin patch pictures. I'm sure they did. I know that I've have, when I got out, I have talked a few times with uh, Angel Aviles from Maybe the Loca. Um, you know, I think I have her on my social media. Um, but as far as Jesse Borrego, no. Um, who else? Uh, there's another actor, Jose Rosette. Um, he started, um, he was, when we met him, he did small parts, but big movies. Like he did, uh, he played on Iraqi Soldier and Three Kings. Remember with Ice Cube and George Clooney? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, Marky Mark. Yeah, he played a yeah. small small part, uh, like a bodyguard in um, Any Given Sunday with Al Pacino and um, uh, uh, what's his name, Jamie Foxx? Remember the Fox. football movie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, if you go back there and watch the, um, what's her name? Um, the one that played the owner of the uh, of the football team. She's a, a Cameron, Cameron uh, Diaz. No. Cameron Diaz? She was in the movie. She was, I don't know if she was the owner, though. Yeah, well, she, Jose Rosette was her bodyguard, and he was, so those, these are big movies, but they were non-talking parts. Right. And um, so then we got him, and uh, to play in a movie with us. And matter of fact, um, that kick started his career. To he is still acting now. He's done some amazing movies uh, now. Uh, I think the latest one he did is Monsters of Man. Okay. Yeah, okay. that movie is that movie is underrated. It's like Predator and Terminator put together. It's awesome. Wow, <laughs> that's like an overload right there. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Strange Days of Saint Napster. There you go, Napster. That's yeah, Napster. What, that's the first thing that came around where uh, people were able to stream music without paying for it. I believe yeah. that was the first thing that came out where people were able to stream it and, yeah. uh, and not pay for it. Today, and then Lime, mean, LimeWire, I think after that. Yeah, today it's you know you can find music. Just I mean, just type it in and you can just hear it. But yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that was becoming a big thing where uh, you didn't have to pay for music anymore, you know. And um, I one thing that you said earlier, and I noticed in watching your movies, Pastor. Yeah. Is, man, do you guys push your music in your movies? Oh yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, of I, I, I'm watching the uh the opening scene and mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this opening scene is taking quite a while. And it's like, <laughs> okay, it's taking quite a while because it's it's putting out the whole song out there. And it's like almost it's like every chance that you guys find, you guys yeah. throw your music in there. So uh how was that for your music uh for your music career? uh now making movies um how much was it for you guys to say like hey let's put this song in there this song in but let's not yeah. overdo it like how 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 did, how did you guys uh well i mean at that time, time you gotta you gotta understand at that time the whole goal was to sell music okay we we it's it's funny because we saw the movie thing as supplemental and the music thing as the main thing now things are flipped nowadays because you put music out there you can have 11 million views on youtube but you ain't really gonna make no money off of it so but back then the music was the main thing so obviously the whole idea was put as much music as, as possible into the movies to push the, the soundtracks and and the artists because then when people started seeing in movies all these all these cholo gangster movies and they're seeing us doing all this drive-bys and shoot up it, it made it more 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 realistic when they would listen to our music you know mm -hmm. and it helps it helped our music sales um, but obviously, um, I mean, if I did a film now, it wouldn't be like that, you know, but that was kind of the goal. That was the, that's the whole reason was to push the music. Okay. Who came up with these movies? Who came up with these stories? Who wrote these movies? Uh, you know, you've been in a few of them. Who came up with the ideas of, okay, this, yeah. let's, let's make another movie and yeah. this is how we're going to make it. This is what it's going to be about. These are going to be the characters. How, how did it that all go about? Uh, it was myself and the two brothers. Mm -hmm. We would just sit there. We'd sit there, get a pizza, and and just sit there and talk and talk and talk. And and we had a piece of paper um, and write this storyline of of this plot. And then 
we would write, you know, different scenes and, and it just kind of flesh it out. That way. We didn't know what we were doing, bro. You know, we didn't really know what we were doing, but we just uh, tried coming up with a, a story that we thought we would see, you know? Okay. Okay. And uh, were you happy after writing it? I mean, what you guys were putting on camera, is that exactly what you guys were picturing? Because when you write something, your imaginary, you know, your imagination can take you so far, right? But then when yeah. it's time to actually sit down and put it on film, it's like, man, this isn't exactly, I, I don't know if I yeah. really have the means to everything that I was yeah. picturing. I, I, I thought about this a lot, especially when I was locked up and even the last 10 years of, of how I would have done things differently. I okay. think that I'm, I, I, can, I can only speak for me, not the two brothers. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, I cared about the music. My heart was in the music. I didn't really care about the film. Had I known that people were going to watch these films on Amazon Prime around the world, I probably would have paid a little bit more attention, <laughs> you know. But at, at that time, you know, I, I didn't I didn't realize anybody would remember it six months after it came out. You know, and um, but now I look back and I'm like, man, I would have took my time to hit better angles. I would have said this line a little differently. I would have done my body movement should have been like this. I mean, I, I see all those mistakes now, you know, and um, that stuff's forever, man. Music, the movies and music is, is going to outlast our lives, you know. So I didn't I didn't think like that back then, you know, but um, I. I regret um, not pushing for excellence more back then. Okay. Because all you really cared about back then is, is – this is what I'm hearing from you, Pastor. All you really cared about back then is using the movies to uplift your music. To, to yeah. Your music. And I was living off of my music. You know, I wasn't – you got to understand because the rappers nowadays, you know, it, it's, it's real hard for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard because, you know, back then we had physical copies. And if I released a CD – and and it was under my label that I had. I'm not, I didn't have a label over me, and I sold 10,000, 15,000 units. That's a lot of money. And we were cranking out, our label's cranking out a project every 30 days. Mm. You know, and that money just added up, added up, added up. And I'm just like, I don't care about these movie, movies. I mean, I care about the movies, but because they're helping me. Honestly, it, it's even then, now that I think about it, if I would have spent more time making the movies better, then I probably would have sold even more records. But I was young and I was dumb, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. <laughs> uh, you know, your movies are uh, kind of on the low budget uh, stream and all. How did you guys? Did you guys have a budget for making these movies? Did you guys say this is yeah. this is all we got to spend for the movie, or did you guys clear the piggy bank and say whatever it takes to get this movie done? Uh, well, you, I mean, our, our, our music royalties is what we were using to film these movies mm -hmm. and the royalties were coming in really, really good. You know, um, I bought my house cash back then, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, we were very comfortable, you know, and, um, we weren't like, you know, pup daddy comfortable, but we were comfortable mm -hmm. to where we all had our own houses. We had our own cars. We, everything was, was good. And, so we we would write this movie and we'll be like, okay, this movie's gonna cost us thirty thousand. All right, I got ten grand. You got ten grand. Yeah, you got ten grand. All right, let's do it. You know, and it was kind of like that. So another thing too, though, I gotta say this is that before anybody judges those movies, is we didn't have the technology of now. Now you can have a complete editing system on your laptop. Mm -hmm you know, and, and filters and color correction and, and audio plugins to make the audio. We didn't have that stuff, you know? So it's, it's, you can't compare, you know what I mean? Somebody doing a movie now to somebody doing a movie back then. We had a lot of obstacles, you know? Okay. So, so what did you have? Did you just have a, a camera and clip on we, mics? I mean, what, what did we you had have? a, we had a 16 millimeter mic, which is, um, most films are done 35 millimeter. It's a big film. 16 millimeters, basically half of that. And um, 16 millimeter requires a lot of light. Uh -huh. But back then there was no LED lights. So you had to use bulbs. And how can you get bulbs? It, it, just, it was just real, real hard to do a movie 
without having Hollywood type of equipment. So um, we had a camera, we had some lights, we had a, a boom mic. You know, if you ever see the guy holding up the the, yeah. lot, the mic with the boom, we had yeah. one of those. Um, we didn't have lavalier mics. I'm not sure why we did, and I think they were too expensive back then. Um, we had really, really basic stuff. You know, uh, a couple of lights. We like think I think our lights were like from Home Depot with just really expensive bulbs and those little um, aluminum light, you yeah. know, fixtures and whatnot. Uh -huh. it, it was just we, we we were just straight guerrilla style filming you know and um i mean we we i can't say we did our best because I, I think we could have done better but um we did some pretty amazing stuff with the little we had okay were you uh were you guys ever did you guys look at other movies uh that were you know raza based and say like hey man we can make a movie Somewhat like that. I mean, there's some pretty low budget movies. The one that comes to mind that is probably as low budget as you can think of is probably the movie uh, The Duke of Earl. Um, yeah. That that one is with a home video camera. The sound is very bad. But <laughs> man, what a classic. <laughs> I can yeah. watch that movie from beginning to end right now, man, and just be really yeah. entertained. Uh, uh, did you guys watch any of the PS? Your first movie was in 1998, I believe. So there, there had been already a couple of movies yeah. out there. Did you guys watch yeah. any of these movies? Oh yeah, we. I, I was a huge fan of Boulevard Nights, of course. Okay, yeah. Huge fan of Duke of Earl. Uh, I didn't even care if it was a Christian film. I liked it because it showed cholos and cholas and lowriders. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. um. I remember watching Duke of Earl a lot, a lot of times. And then obviously when American Me came out, Blood In, Blood Out came out, um, Mi Vida Loca came out, Mi Familia came out. Um, uh, there was another, there's a few couple other ones that I don't even remember, but man, you know, I, of course, not only that though, but um, we were fans of film. We were fans of just movies, you know, and uh, uh, just all the way around, whether it was action or uh, drama or, I mean, Fiction, nonfiction, you know, uh, we were just uh, fans of film, you know, and, and to an extent, I still am, you know, I, I love to watch movies and I, I enjoy story movies that are well done. I enjoy good stories and, and watching it um, on film. I, I enjoy reading a book and then it, it's made into a film and to see the, uh, the artistic license that they use to convert a 500 page book into a 90 minute movie, you know, and just to see that conversion and yeah, so. Hey, Pastor, just uh, real quick. Why Pumpkin Patch Pictures? Why Why that? Why, I, I, why, not, why not, if you guys were in the music, why not like Dark yeah. Room Pictures or something? Yeah, I, I don't know. Those are the brothers, the two brothers, uh, Kiro's brothers came up with that. They liked it. I didn't care about the movies, you know, and uh, it was kind of like, because I was the engineer, I was the one that ran the studio the sound mm -hmm. studio, the studio was in my house. I was the engineer. I I'm the one that did the mix downs, the mix, the production. I'm the one that did all that. And I was more like, you guys do the movies. I'll do this. We'll come up with the stories together. I'll act in them when you, when you film them and just leave me in my studio, you know? And so, um, I'm not sure why they called it that. I, I don't really know. I, I, I'm sure they've talked about it in other interviews. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Okay. And did everybody get paid that was on film? I mean, did anybody do any favors? I mean, even if they weren't main actors, you know, I, I'm thinking of uh, the movie like uh, Smile Now, Cry Later and yeah. everything. Did, was everybody, did anybody just say like, yeah, I'll just be in your movie? Because I was just recently, uh, well, not recently, uh, last year, I'm going to be in a movie that comes out this summer, uh, depending yeah. on when you guys are watching this, but and you know it was just hey man we just need a couple of guys to be there in the movie there in the background you're gonna be part of the movie but just we just kind of need you there and i was just like yeah cool man i didn't get paid or anything yeah no i i did that a lot we we did that a lot of our a lot of the people in the background were our friends or homeboys okay. um wouldn't pay them um we we're just like hey man uh we uh dinner's on us you know <laughs> and uh, they're like yeah man that sounds fun let's do it you know uh, the actors, though, they did get paid. I mean, obviously, Angel Aviles, Jesse Borrego, Jose Rosette, a couple other actors, um, we would pay them. But even then, it was minimal, you know? Right. We'd pay their flight, we'd pay their hotel, we'd pay their food, and then we'd give them something to take home. 
What made you guys do a sequel to uh, a Dope Game? That's the only sequel I think you guys made. You guys didn't yeah. make a sequel to any other movie except for Dope Game. Well, the reason being was because um, at that time, our distributor, which was based out of Miami, um, for some reason, Blockbuster Video and Hollywood Video did really well with that title. Oh, okay. You know? And uh, because you got these little things, man, like, for instance, you always got to name your your movie something in A, B, C, or D. That way, in the video store, it was in the front when you walked in. Because mm. if your name started with Z, it was going to be in the back of the, the store. Mm. So there's little things, you know, so there, because it's called Dope Game and it's D, it was probably close up front. And, um, and it did really well with Blockbuster Video, Hollywood Video. So our distributor made a suggestion and said, hey, can you make a dope game part two? So we didn't really want to do a part, an, an exact sequel to the movie. So what we did was just gave another dope movie and we called it dope game part two. It has nothing to do with the first one. Wow. That is taking <laughs> us and pulling the curtain back. I had no idea pastor. So you guys just wanted to uh, sell more and get more eyeballs on it. So it's like, hey, well, how about just Dope Game Part 2? And that way yeah. it's, in, it's in the forefront when people go into the video store. Yeah. Oh, man. I'll tell you, Pastor. There was nothing like being a kid on a Friday and going to the video store. And uh, right. it, it was great, man. Oh, yeah. those, those times will never come back, man. But going to the video store on a Friday. And, reading the back. Reading the back. Yeah, reading the back to see what it's about and everything. Ah, oh, man, those <laughs> those were just great, great, great times, man. Yeah. But all right, so Pastor, um, you uh you get incarcerated in two thousand four. Yeah. Uh, you you uh do federal prison time six years. You get out of prison. Um, the whole rap game thing. Uh, you put it behind you. Yeah. Did you think at all, Pastor, for you to get back into making movies at all? Yeah, well, I did. Um, in 2013, I decided that I wanted to um, film a, a faith-based film. But I, I, at the time, a lot of the Christian movies were very cheesy. And I'm like, you know what? I want to make a faith-based film, but I want to make it gritty. You know, just, just something real raw and gritty. I didn't want to act in it because I, I wanted to take everything I've learned because even these, these movies, even the, the things I should have done, you still learn from it, you know? And um, so I really was, especially in prison, we watched a lot of movies in prison, you know, and I would watch angles or, or watch how they would build suspense or, or watch just a, everything, you know, I, I would just like, like it was school. So mm -hmm. when I got out, um, I still had my music equipment, my studio equipment, and I sold it all because I didn't want to do no rap at all. And I turned around and I bought myself an HD camera, a, a simple microphone, a couple lights and um, a couple other things. And I filmed Always With You. I wrote it with a, a, another pastor friend of mine mm -hmm. and we wrote it and we filmed it and um, put it to DVD. Here's my problem was that I was eager to make a movie, but then once it was done, I had nowhere to distribute it to because um, I was kind of behind on the times and everything was streaming and everything was, you know, I mean, nobody was going to video stores. Who's going to buy my DVD of this Christian movie? So I kind of got stuck there. Um, so anytime I would go visit uh, at the time, I wasn't pastor in a church yet. Okay. So I would get a lot of invites to preach here, preach there. And that's the opportunity I would have to take my movie. But other than that, um, it had no major distribution behind it. So I kind of put a pause on it. And uh, But I'll tell you what, I'm really proud of that movie. I'm really proud. I did all the editing on it, um, all the everything on it. You know what I mean? And uh, me and my uh, good friend, um, Scott Youngkite, he's the one to help me write it. But for the most part, he was with me when I directed most of the scenes, but I edited the whole thing from front to back. And I've learned a lot from it, you know. And if somebody ever sees that movie, you'll know it's like day and night compared to the darkroom movies that I did. Okay. Uh, I got something to say about that, but let me see. Strange Day says, Trucks, did you have a count at the local video rental store before Blockbuster? And did you rewind? Of course, <laughs> man. Be, look, before Blockbuster, there were, uh, the, the local video store, Videotron, uh, 
Eddie's video store. Ah, yeah, all these video stores way, way before uh yeah. Blockbuster. And they would charge you. They would charge you if you if you took the movie back and it wasn't rewinded, they would charge you. I forgot how much they they charge you, but yeah, they they definitely uh they definitely charge yeah. you. But yeah, yeah, we used to go to those video stores always, man. Uh Pass Music is part of Northern California culture. Uh, what's up, buddy familia? Um that movie pastor that you talk about, yeah, that, that you are, it's uh, at least here it says that your camera and electric department in that movie, yeah, um, always with you. I've never heard of that movie, I've never seen it. I am telling you right now, Pastor, I'm going to watch it, I am going yeah. to check it out. I've never seen or heard of that movie. Um, it, yeah. it says on here that it was released in 2004. Um, why stop there, Pastor? Now that there's more yeah. equipment, technologies out there, you can put it up on YouTube now. Why, why stop there, Pastor? Well, uh, well, I'm glad you're asking because I didn't stop there. I have, I have plans on making films. Um, I have now upgraded our camera. I have lavalier mics. I have boom mics. I have lights. I've, I have everything. I have the gimbal. To hold the TV, uh, 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 to hold the camera steady while running, because it's this whole body strap that has an arm that, like a steady cam that holds the camera. Um, I, I have a drone for drone shots. Um, so actually, um, I've just begun, man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I like that. You you just you're just beginning. Uh but that's uh Corona Strange Days. Does he owe a bill? Oh, I owe a bill, but you know what? That uh video store is gone. So uh hey, whatever it may be. No, I'll tell you guys one thing. I remember we uh rented a movie or was it a video game? I forgot, and we didn't return it, and we didn't return it for quite a while, and the bill was like 30 something dollars, and my mom was pissed oh my goodness she was livid man she, she was on a rampage i won't tell you but she disciplined us but man she was livid man because it was our responsibility to walk back and take the movie back and we just didn't we wow. just you know just that one time just that one time we learned our lesson just that one time but uh man and back then you know we didn't grow up with a lot of money so 35 bucks was 35 five dollars yeah. to her it was 35 freaking dollars so yeah. uh yeah but yeah well no that's good that's uh good to hear pastor uh you know there's people that want to get into the movie business and um want to make their own movies i remember you're talking with paul from la times uh, Shasta yeah. paul, and talking about getting into the movie industry and um like a lot of these places you know there's not <sighs> I don't want to use any excuses or anything, but there's not really too many doors open for, you know, the, uh, the Chicano, Chicana movies and, and out there like that, whether it be, I, I hate the fact that it's always looked at as gangs. It needs to be about gangs. No, it doesn't always need to be about gangs. It could be about anything else, but these movies don't really get out there and pushed out there. There's some really good ones. Uh, Price of Glory is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Tia Soup is another one that I oh, like. Yeah. Yeah, it's a father, a single father with his uh, young adult, uh, four three young daughters, daughter. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's, there's a few of them. There was another one in my head. I, I oh, Mamitas is another one. This kid growing up with his father and uh, trying to find out what what was his mom really about. And all these th have nothing to do with gangs, but these movies are always kind of low budget. Nobody really picks up on them. Nobody with a lot of money really gets behind them. Uh, Pastor, what, what's uh, what's your thoughts on on getting some some of these stories out there? Wow, uh, I think that um, I think it's a good time to be honest with you because there's so many avenues now. You have Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu. You got Tubi. You have all these opportunities. You know, even YouTube, just to throw things out there even to get your name out there as, as a director or as a, as a choreographer or something, there's so much more exposure. Now it's harder because everybody, everybody has access to a high quality camera nowadays, mm. but not everybody has access to have a good story. 
you know so i think that's what it comes down to is i i've seen a few low budget movies that look amazing a thousand times better than our, our movies back then but their stories are just horrible the and, and i'm just like man you know the quality is so good but they don't that doesn't mean you have the artistic um ability to write an amazing story that's going to captivate people to watch it mm. you know and um but i would say that um now now is a good time for for especially latinos to you know we got to create on our own market and support our own market and i and i think for the most part we do to be honest with you mm. yeah yeah i i i think uh i think we do there might be a few people that are like no man you know what just because the quality probably is not as good or great, but you can only put so much into it. Uh, you can't really compete with um, somebody who's putting a lot of money uh, back into yeah. it. Strange Days. Mamitas is cool. It is cool. It is a, it, it is a good story. Uh, Artie Marin says, Pastor, make a Chicano movie about your story. Would mm -hmm. love to see that raw story. Pastor, uh, I've read your book, Lost in the Storm. Would there be any time... Uh, for you to go ahead and turn that and, and put that up in the um, as a movie, I would I would love to, but I would want somebody to come along mm -hmm. and and put some real money into it with the film crew and not me have to do the work mm -hmm. because I truly believe that when somebody's telling their own story, you're gonna tell you're going to show things that are important to you, but maybe not so important to captivate the audience. And I think if somebody is on the outside looking in saying, Hey, let me take your story and let me make something beautiful out of it artistically on a film. So I don't think I would want to produce my own film. I'd want to be a part of it. Obviously I, I, I would want final say so, but I think that um, if somebody came along and felt it important enough to, to turn lost in the storm into a movie, I would, Man, I'd love that. Yeah, I I would like that too. I think it's a really good book. It's your autobiography of your life. And but I would want it to be done right. Yeah. Um I think that's one story right there where we might need to wait a while. Yeah. So we could get some good money to where it can be, you know, we could get uh I wouldn't want to see it low budget. I wouldn't want to see for uh, for people to give it a reason to be like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to watch. But I, that that one does deserve the the money behind it, so we could get you know good quality. And yeah, I, I would love to see that being turned into a movie, Pastor. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, me too. As long as it's done right, you know, it just that would. I mean, if you think about it. That's. That's my legacy, man. That's that's going to carry on after me, you know. So I, I would want it done right. Yeah, yeah, uh, Pastor. Now, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to rib on you here a little bit, Pastor. Okay. okay. By asking a question here, uh, I seen your acting. Is there any? Uh, are, are you looking to do any more acting or just be involved behind the camera? <laughs> no. no, I don't want to act at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know what, though, I realized in doing Always With You is, is I, was, I was a good coach, mm. you know, for the actors in the movie. Um, you know, I was able to, like, there's a scene where my daughter had to cry. And you got to understand, my daughter is the one that didn't cry, even as a child. Like, like she would just bite her lip and not cry, you know. And um, But there was a scene where I needed her. She did the scene, and... And I told her, I said, Mia, um, you, you, you got to cry on this one, mm. you know? And, um, and I just started talking with her and just coaching her through it. And sure enough, boom, the waterworks started, you know? And I was proud of myself as, as a, I, you know, I'm just like, man, I'm a horrible actor. But um, I was able to coach these people because I was able to see what I wanted to see on film. You know, and, and tell the person, you know, like, no, do it like this or do that or no, don't do it like this. And um, I had a, I actually had a lot of fun doing that. Okay. Okay. All right. So just be involved in coaching and with the cameras and all. Yeah. Good, good stuff, Pastor. Good, yeah. good stuff. I cannot wait for you to get uh, get some of this stuff rolling. Um, Pastor, I wrote... Uh, movie, I told everybody, I don't know what I'm doing. 
all I am doing is pacing back and forth in my living room while I'm playing some, <laughs> while I'm playing some oldies in the background. Yeah. And my son, Eric, is there typing it down. Um, I didn't know what to do with it. I don't know how long to make it. I don't. I didn't know any of that. Got a few pointers from Paul. Shout out to Paul from LA Times. And I went ahead and sent it up to you, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, can you just go ahead and talk to me a little bit about uh, what I threw out to you and, and what you saw? Oh, man. Sorry. Sorry. I had a phone call, so I don't know if it muted me. Yeah, just for a second, but you're good. Now. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed it, man. I really enjoyed it. I didn't know what to expect because you you said it like this. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just wrote this with my son. <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect, you know. Um, in the it, it, in the beginning, I remember thinking like, okay, where's this going? And then and then this moment hit where I'm just like, oh my gosh, if I would direct this movie, I would put a little bit of this in the very beginning just to catch people and then keep it going, you know, because um, there was a, a part that I really liked that really the story just took off from there. So, um, man, I, I think it's a great story, you know, and uh, that's just you and your son or just you. Uh, I mean, he's he's the one typing it down. He threw a little bit of input okay. here and there. I would just talk out loud and yeah. uh, get a little bit of input from whoever is around. Even my beautiful, crazy local wife will be in the kitchen cooking or something. Yeah. She might throw a little bit of input here and there and we'll probably modify it and things of that nature but i i i'm i just can't wait to start doing another one and <laughs> another one i got so many yeah. ideas for movies but that's the only thing pastor it's like okay once i'm done you know now what you know that's that's kind of the only thing that i think about yeah okay, cool has, anybody, has, paul, I did it. has paul read it or just me uh just you just you. So I'll probably throw it around to a few people, see who can yeah. actually start. Uh, I don't know, making the the wheels turn or 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 what have you. But um, Pastor, uh, are you working on anything? Are you working when when it comes to movie wise? Are you? Do you have anything uh, um, loading up in the chamber, getting ready to fire? Well, I did do I did do a lot of filming for um, this documentary I was doing with Sharon's brother. Uh, oh, yeah. and then, and then, and then we get busy and then I put a pause on it and then I work on it and I get busy. Uh, but that's kind of what's the only thing I have right now, but I was just sharing with Sharon last night. Um, I had this movie in my head and I'm not going to say it on here, <laughs> but I had this idea two months ago and just yesterday I told her, I said, you know, I really want to do a movie with this and this and this. And she was just like, Oh my God. She was at his genius, mm. you know, and um, I don't know. It just, it's something that I, it would be a lot easier for me to do this idea than the one I, I was going to do. Um, mm. Cause I was going to do midst of my confusion, a book that I wrote in the past, I was going to make it into a movie, but Oh man, it, it's kind of a big film with a lot of actors, you know, and I don't have that kind of money. I don't, I don't have that kind of money to even, to even pay only the lunch for all these people, you know? So um, this other idea is, is a very minimal um, cast, but yet I think it'd be a highly captivating story, you know? So that's kind of like, um, I think that's what, if I do a film, it'll be that one first after this documentary I'm doing on Sharon's brother. Okay. Pastor out of the movies that you acted in, which one, uh, which one is your favorite? Dope game Two. Dope game part two. Okay. Okay. That was and my we, favorite because I played a, a cop and I didn't play a gang member. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. You're on the other side of the law, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I was a I was a dirty cop. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were an Alonzo. Uh Pastor, and which which one did you watch that you like, ah oh, man, I wish that one didn't exist? Uh penitentiary chances. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to say that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor, uh, anything else, Pastor, before we bring it to an end? Any last words on the movie industry? Um, I know 
like myself, you are into movies. You enjoy watching yeah. the stories. I like watching your daily devotionals. And I remember watching one of your devotionals when you and Sharon, or this, this is a while back, when Sharon emphasized that when you guys watch a movie, you guys sit down. And if she's going to get up or something, you pause it. And it's like, no, no, because you have to capture the yeah. story. You know, the story, you have to get it all. And yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. It's like, no, no, I'm seeing down. I'm, I need to be lost yeah. in the story. You know, nothing else needs to exist right now. I'm, I need to take in the story that's being told. So if somebody's going to get up to use the restroom or something, hey, pause. Not only pause, but probably rewind 10 seconds. So yeah. I can get, yeah, so I can go ahead and get the lead up to what I was about to miss. You know, yeah. so that's that's how i watch movies pastor and i i'm just glad that that's how you watch movies as well but well, another another thing is like if 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 we're tired mm -hmm. i won't just stop a movie i have to wait for the scene to finish okay yeah that's because i don't want to stop in the middle of a scene uh -huh. and it throws me off when i when on the next day when i want to finish it yeah 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 uh <laughs> my, my beautiful crazy loca wife and i are watching a show right now a hulu show and uh it's already over we're just binge watching it because we've yeah. never seen it before so we're watching it and i remember i was falling asleep and then she's all like go stop it we'll we'll watch it tomorrow and i'm like there's 10 minutes left no that's just yeah. it's up let's finish watching it because i do not want to come back and then we'll yeah. go to the next episode but uh pastor any last words? Uh, when can we expect you to start? I, I know you're working on this documentary. When can we expect yeah. you to start uh, making some moves with uh, with your with new film? equipment and stuff and, and making some movies and all? I think the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I want to get Always With You on Amazon Prime. I talked to, to Big Paul about it because he knows mm -hmm. how to do it. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of walking me through it, but I need to talk to him a few more times. So I do want to get Always With You out there. Um, as far as for you though, I, I can, I have a private link that you can watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but that's the plan is to get it on Amazon prime. Uh, he said that you have to submit it with, um, subtitles and whatnot. I'm not, I'm not sure how to set that up, but he, he knew how to do that. Uh, and then just after that, the documentary, Oh, and I'm making always with you actually into a book. Okay. That I am working on right now. Uh, because obviously in, in a book, you can flesh out the characters more than a 90 minute movie. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wes Carson's asking, can we get past his thoughts on Boulevard Nights? Oh man, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. Lo I love that movie. Um, I have a love hate relationship, honestly, because um, the reason I say hate is because that's probably what started me on a spiral of wanting to live a vida loca. Mm. was watching that movie at the mm. same time now as an adult it doesn't inspire me that way so now i can enjoy it as a classic mm. um i think the actors were amazing especially the that cholo that couldn't speak spanish are you a chavala or something <laughs> 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 yeah but uh, uh, but danny uh, de la paz when he's like i'm not dumb you know what i mean like so yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a classic. It's a classic. Um, I was excited because uh, Paul actually drove me through um, East LA to that bridge, that famous mm -hmm. bridge. Right. You know, and um, and that was cool to see that in real life, you know, because I know that uh, Mi Familia was filmed down there with Chucho also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, yeah. it's just, uh, you know, that, that's cool, you know. And uh, but yeah, Boulevard Nights is a classic. Yeah. What What is your favorite uh, Chicano movie, Pastor? Don't laugh. Uh, I'll tell you why. Blood in, blood out. <laughs> okay. All right. The reason I like it is because it's so overboard and quotable uh -huh. that that we're always quoting it. Even here, we'll turn it into Christian quotes, and it's just funny because they, the actors were, <laughs> were overacting so many times that it's just, it became a favorite because it's, it's almost like watching a movie of memes. Mm, okay. <laughs> You, you, but, you know what's funny? Uh, depending when you guys are watching this, but I'm I'm actually going to be at the celebration for the 30 year anniversary this Saturday 
uh, yeah. for blood in, blood out. So wow. uh, at, at the La Plaza, La Plaza de Raza, uh, yeah. I will be there and I'll be taking footage and and, and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, but no, but I, know, I do enjoy that movie though a lot. I, I I enjoy it too. It it is kind of laughable and everything. And and you're right. A lot of the quotes are are. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's just a good time. That movie. Oh, uh, mine yeah. would probably have to be um, uh, La Bamba. La, La La Bamba for one reason or another. I don't know. I just really love the story. I love the yeah. movie. I can watch it from beginning to end yeah. and be highly entertained. And I will say this. Bob, the brother, he makes that movie. If yeah, he, he does. If, yeah, if he, he is not in that movie, then that movie's not not it's not that yeah. good. But because of you know reasons like this. What about me? What about me? I, I know you're looking for God damn about me. Just Reasons like that. It's just such a yeah. great movie. I love yeah. it. I love but it. Another one, another mention is is probably Mi Familia. Great movie. Great movie. The, it's just it's an epic. It's it's it it, it passes generations. Mm -hmm. Um Chucho just completely took the beginning and then Jimmy Smith took the second part. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's hard to find a movie that the main actor changes and it still captivates you, you know? And uh, I thought that was amazing. Um, another, there's another one um, that we didn't mention is, I mean, we got to mention the movie Selena. Selena. Oh yeah. 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 And that, then, and then another one was Philly Brown. Philly Brown. I don't think I've heard of that one. I'll really? It's, it's, one it's a girl in, in East LA and she's a, a up, and, up and coming rapper. Her mom's in prison. Uh, and uh, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips plays her dad. Oh, for, there's this Lou Diamond Phillips, then it's Stand and Deliver as well. And, oh, uh, oh my gosh, Stand and Deliver, that's right. Stand that one and too. Deliver, uh, Road Dogs is one that flies under the radar. Ro that's the one I, I, yeah, I, I was gonna mention earlier and I couldn't remember. Road Dogs, yeah, Road Dogs is another one. So, uh, no, you know what, there's a lot of good stories out there. Um, I know I was bringing it to an end, but I don't want to do that without asking you this, Pastor. What's your thoughts? Because, I, you know, I talked to a couple of people here and there. And and what's uh, what's your thoughts about Chicano movies? They have to be about streets and gangs. If not, then Chicanos ain't really all that interested in watching. Yeah. Um, I, I think we need to break out of it. Mm -hmm. Um. I think there's, there's, for some reason, we're drawn to action. We're drawn to shootouts. We're drawn, but so why can't we do a a uh, film about uh, Chicano soldiers, or mm -hmm. in war, or PTSD, or, um, but even like that one, the tortilla. What, what's it with the three daughters? Tortillas, you know, tortillas. yeah, like that one. Um, we we do got to break out of that. Honestly, um, I thought Mi Familia. That's why I like that one so well because even though Chucho. And mm -hmm. Jimmy Smith played gangsters, but it showed uh, there's a scene, there's a powerful scene where Jimmy Smith is in prison, and and it's then the the narration said they felt like his character was doing the time of the rage of the whole family. Oh. You know, I, I can't remember exactly, but I love the way it was worded. You know, um, but I, I think we have shown. I mean, look at the movie Selena, how much support that had. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I mean, we do need to break out of that, even though. Um, I do enjoy, you know, the Blood In, Blood Out and Boulevard Nights and all that, but we're so much more than that. You know, another one that, that didn't get mentioned is the movie uh, about Cesar Chavez. You know, oh, that yeah. one was an um, yeah, that was an amazing movie. Um, I can't remember the actor's name. Um, no, I can't remember his name, but I, yeah, I did I did watch it. I thought it was okay. I wasn't yeah. really that highly entertained of the movie, but it, it was it was okay. But that that's yeah. one of the things that I uh, think about pretty often. And it's like, well, if we're not if we're not making movies about prison or or street yeah. gangs, you know, slanging in in the barrio and everything like that, then it just seems like like uh, Chicanos like they're not really that interested in yeah. watching it. But at the same time. I want really somebody to roll the dice and take a chance and really make you want an action yeah. movie. I love action movies. Let's make a really good 
action movie. Yeah. You know, so um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully things start turning. Hopefully things yeah. really start turning around. Yeah, I'm not is. saying I, I I'm no way whatsoever saying get out completely of the you know prison and streets. It's just it doesn't all have to be in that basket, you know. That's like hey, oh man, there's a Chicano movie. Oh man, immediately. It's like, hey, where'd they shoot at? What barrio, what hood is in from prison and pinta and everything like that? And it's like, it doesn't all have to be that. We could make some other yeah. stories and, and, and make some good movies out there. Well, so. that's one that's one reason why I like Price of Glory so much, because it wasn't about gangs. Right, right, right. That's that's a good point, Pastor. That's a good point. Yeah. I really love that movie, Price of Glory, where it's just a dad. He's coaching his two young sons to be boxers. That's... Yeah. That's a really, really good one. So I really like that movie. But, Pastor, now we are going to bring it to an end, Pastor. The floor is yours. Any last words to anybody who's watching this live or is going to watch it later? Pastor, whatever you want, throw out there. Any shout-outs? However they well, I just, I just, I just want to uh, just invite anybody, if they're interested in knowing a little bit more about the Lord, you know, uh, to come to our website uh, or our YouTube channel, uh, House of Rest Church on YouTube. and. Um, you know, we welcome anybody that wants to watch. We have different things on there. I'm preaching, Bible study, things like that. I also have a David Rocha YouTube channel where I, I do other stuff. I, I do my paintings because uh, if people don't know, I paint. I do interviews and whatnot. So House of Rest Church YouTube or David Rocha YouTube. And uh, and just talk to me. You know, comment on there if you want to answer. ask me a question, you know, and, and you could just ask me right on there, you know. and um, But other than that, man, I just appreciate you. Uh, brother, and appreciate your friendship. Uh, Pastor, the, the pleasure is mine. I, I highly appreciate you coming on here. I appreciate your friendship. You guys go check them out, House of Rest Church, and even the David Rocha. I'm actually a member, Pastor, at the I know <laughs> on your channel. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, I, I really look forward to uh, you dipping your hands more into the uh, movie uh industry oh water and power yeah there's another one oh i haven't seen that i've been meaning to see that uh i'm not gonna say much i'll just go like that yeah. that's all but uh, here's the thing though it is is it's it's rasa so i'm gonna support it and watch it you know i got you yeah and yeah. I, I would i would too i would too which i watched it and uh yeah. it's it's obviously you need money to make uh it was pretty low budget, but yeah. Hey, I, I watched it and there it is. But Pastor, thank you so much for jumping on. You guys go ahead and check out some of his movies. And I have not seen the last one that you were involved in, which you were not acting in, but you were definitely involved in. And that's called Always With You 2014. Uh came out in 2014. I'm yeah. definitely gonna make it a point to watch it, Pastor. And uh thank you so much for being on here tonight. And I will definitely have you back on because uh, we're going to grab the movie industry, Pastor. <laughs> all <You're right>. taking it. <laughs> With all that, Moss Movies and Shows, we'll catch you guys on next one. All right. Bye.